Hello, it's Misha Liz Hudson. I'm Liz Hudson, the founder and director of learning at LexEDO, the learning experience design studio. I've been working in instructional design and learning technology across the adult and higher education sector and beyond for around 15 years now. As my accent might give away, I'm originally from the West Midlands in England and I moved to beautiful Murray in Northern Scotland in 2018 to work at UHI, the University of the Highlands and Islands. I then set up Lexedia to explore the potential beyond the established traditions of online and face-to-face -face learning across different sectors. We're still a micro company, but really privileged to have Elaine Dalloway join our team as a learning design consultant last year, and she's been working with me on the UHI Gallic Awareness and Support project. This is actually a continuation of a project we'd worked on when we were both previously employed by UHI, and so I'm delighted to be joined today by another former colleague and now project partner at UHI, DJ McIntyre. Hello, it's Mr DJ. Hello, I am DJ, and I am the Gaelic officer at the University of the Highlands and Islands, or otherwise known as UHI. UHI is a tertiary education provider with over 36,000 students across a partnership of colleges which are located all around the Highlands and Islands, Murray and Perthshire. UHI is seen as a flagship university for Gaelic development and it offers, as a tertiary organisation, the broadest possible range of training and education, including modern apprenticeships, further and higher education and postgraduate programmes. I am a native speaker from South Uist, with Gaelic being my first language. Based at UHI Executive Office, UHI House in Vaness, in my role I carry out translations in relation to plans and policies, staff development, internal and external communications, and the primary role, and most importantly, the implementation of the UHI Gaelic Language Plan. Thank you, DJ. The Escape Room project that we're going to talk about today is not only inspired by Scottish Gaelic language and culture, it's also designed to take an innovative approach to teaching this subject area and also to support the legal and ethical obligations the university has as a public education provider in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. So I think it would be useful to offer some context and background to our project before we begin, particularly for those of you who might reside outside of Scotland or may not be familiar with this area. DJ, perhaps you could tell us a bit more about the importance of this work in our educational context. Yes, of course. Scottish Gaelic is an indigenous language of Scotland and is protected under the European Charter for regional or minority languages. Scottish Gaelic has official status as a national language of Scotland under the Gaelic Language Act 2005. As UHI is responsible for delivering tertiary education services to areas where Gaelic is primarily spoken, we have an ethical, legal and academic obligation to serve their needs and interests. So we are, in essence, a bilingual university. Despite the enormous contribution Gaelic brings to the Scottish economy, estimated at up to £148 million, and not to mention the beauty of Gaelic language and culture as an academic area of inquiry, we can sometimes face resistance and negative attitudes and other challenges in our efforts to protect the language and preserve it by engaging new learners. Thanks DJ. So even though previous project phases have produced some excellent resources for Gaelic awareness and support at UHI, and this includes um, an interactive online toolkit, which you can find via the Gaelic web page. We've been looking for novel ways for, to engage more and more people. Uh, most of the offerings out there do tend to be courses and resources specifically for learning the Gaelic language, and they're likely to be accessed and sought out by those who already have some Gaelic or are already interested in Gaelic, um, maybe inspired by shows like Outlander or by playing fantasy video games which incorporate Gaelic into the scripts. And this led me to think about using formats more associated with entertainment rather than education 
as an innovative way to entice newcomers. Now I have previously worked on learning design projects that incorporate playful elements, gamification and game-based learning. And a few years ago, I designed a high-end executive leadership programme and this incorporated an escape room that was in a temple on a, an island in the middle of a lake in a country park. Um, and one of the activities involved translating Greek, Welsh and Scottish Gaelic clues to find information within the associated myths and legends of those cultures. Now, the learning objectives of those sessions was, of course, about leadership and communication and teamwork, but it was necessary for the delegates to learn some new words from dictionaries in order to solve the problems. They, of course, had no prior knowledge of those languages, um, and so I thought an escape room style activity could serve multiple purposes, including entry level language learning. After all, people do pay good money nowadays to enjoy escape rooms and if they learn new information and skills or develop a new interest in doing so, so much value could be added. The format might appeal to those who would otherwise not consider uh, learning a new language or finding out more about Gaelic culture and perhaps we could call this intentional teaching collateral learning. The idea of adventure games, including escape rooms, seem to chime well with our evolving concept of a Gallic pedagogy, that is, a signature style of teaching and learning with a sense of authenticity or cultural situatedness of the way that Gallic is taught, or for that matter, how anything else might be taught, but in a Gallic way. Now, knowledge sharing practices in other indigenous cultures, such as the Maori of New Zealand or the Sami peoples of Scandinavia, have been researched and articulated as distinctive pedagogical traditions. Now, there tend to be common elements among them, such as storytelling, proverbs, music and connection to nature and the environment. And our research has found that there are similar traditions in Scottish Gaelic culture. And so escape rooms and adventure games present us with an opportunity to really tap into that heritage while incorporating modern twists. The importance of having new ways of learning a language was evident at the UHI launch of its Gaelic language plan recently. Those attending the event were asked to take part in activities that not only introduced them to Gaelic, but also challenged them in working out solutions and answers. These activities served as an opportunity to test out some of our concepts and ideas and gave us really useful insights into how different people might engage with the activities in different formats. We set up four stations with different materials around a large table and displayed the rest of the challenge on a large screen on the wall. So the premise of this activity is that hackers have locked you all out of your laptop and the digital part of the activity is displayed on the big screen like this. There are then four digital locks and clicking on each one will reveal a clue that needs to be solved. So here is the first clue that needs to be solved and it has a set of drop down options to choose from and when all four of these clues are solved then the laptop unlocks. The answers could be found in each of the four stations around the table. One of our activities was built using wood and used real pebbles to create a Sudoku inspired puzzle. The materials were chosen to create a connection to the natural landscape and the clue tells a story that this is a simple made up game played by children in a village. All of the clues accompanying each station were offered as extracts from a journal. So the wooden board was accompanied by this piece, which includes a sentence written in Gaelic. There were also vocabulary sheets for each station, providing enough information to translate the Gaelic clues. Other activity resources included this poster of the tree alphabet. The 18 letter Gaelic alphabet can actually be articulated as trees and there is also a form of engraving called oam, which originated in Ireland um, and can be found on stones uh, across Ireland, Scotland and other parts of the UK. And this corresponds to the Gaelic tree alphabet. So these symbols actually resemble trees and this is a dream in terms of escape room design um, because you've got all these exciting mysteries, symbols, folklore and it's all 
ready and waiting right there. So for this activity we used OM um, and the tree alphabet in a postcard which you can see on the right um, where it's from a lover sending a cryptic message to their, their secret love. So we used this session to try out our ideas and observe how people interacted with the materials and we learned a lot. Uh, by talking to participants we gained useful insights into the impact cultural differences can have on their engagement with activities. For example, one of the clues translated as Connect Four and there's a deliberate reference to the popular children's game there but no requirement that you'd need to have played it in order to solve the clue. Nonetheless, when talking to participants who were not born in the UK and unfamiliar with the game, it was questioned whether that knowledge could speed up the solving of the clue and create a disadvantage, or at least a perception of disadvantage to some. Uh, so that was really interesting, um, some of the comments like that. And so fast forward on through time to a few months later and to a different format and we've got our first fully formed escape room activity which is completely self-directed and online the Do Learn Common and Scarlin or the Society of the Shadows Challenge um, which we've created in Articulate Storyline now since testing our early prototypes uh, our Gallic adventure game concept has rapidly evolved We've allowed the creative juices to flow, to conjure up a fantastical but still immersive and realistic enough storyline to underpin entire activities together. Our Society of the Shadows is a prestigious but highly secretive organisation for Scottish history and Gaelic enthusiasts, whose mission is to solve ancient mysteries and preserve the hidden and forgotten treasures of Scotland. There is of course an arduous selection and initiation process and to join and progress within the ranks you will of course need to successfully complete a variety of challenges. Not only that, but you will also have to stay ahead of a rival society of thieves and looters or of course you could always become a mole for them. And so here we have the first we hope of many escape room and adventure game activities. This activity, as we've said, has been built using Articulate Storyline 360, which can be pricey in terms of licensing, but for rapid authoring it's excellent. Also, while we have the skills to create custom graphics at Lexedio, by using the Articulate stock graphics, um, many of which are shown in this picture, you can save lots of time and or money. There was a tight budget and time scale for this piece of work, so resourcefulness was really important. Um, I've created some custom graphics and sourced additional content as needed as well. Now, in this room, clicking on the different objects will allow the learner to examine clues and unlock new areas. If you click on the bookshelf, you can access a book of useful vocabulary and terms. Players will have to return to this multiple times and we found that some test users decided to play in pairs with one doing more of the translating. We love the idea that this also worked well as a group activity in the classroom or home. If you go back to the room and click on the small pile of briefcases on the right hand side, you get this screen pop up. You have to find clues elsewhere in the room to crack the code and open the briefcase. When you do get into the case, there are more items to examine in there as well, and there are plenty of other objects and clues to explore in other parts of the room, but I don't want to give you too many spoilers. You can have a go at the activity yourself. Eventually the clues will lead you to generate a code that will unlock a box with a key to the door so that you can escape. Now for those of you who develop this kind of content yourselves, you might be interested to know what's going on behind the scenes in Articulate Storyline. Now in this case I've used a combination of scenes and slide layers, but in future versions I'm going to be switching primarily to scenes with individual slides. That's because it will tidy up the focus order of the elements for keyboard users. I've also used variables and assigned conditions to different triggers to facilitate the right and wrong solutions. But I suspect many of you will be more concerned with pedagogy and curriculum design. 
This project is aimed at promoting Gaelic awareness, primarily among staff, but also students who are interested, and supporting those who want to use Gaelic in their practice, whether they be professional services or teaching staff. And we're developing modules and other resources to support different staff groups to incorporate Gaelic perspectives into their work. The activities in our escape room are deliberately designed around an introductory level curriculum using numbers and colours, uh, those kinds of topics, and other vocabulary that's, that's taught at this level. However, there's no reason why it couldn't be used at any other uh, level. Gaelic language and culture learning outcomes are the foundation for this activity, but it could be used as part of a team building or other professional development activities. Escape room learning outcomes in general can be multidisciplinary and can support various future ready skills, such as creative problem solving and critical thinking. The use of escape rooms as a form of assessment might seem more obvious, but that really doesn't have to be the case. Our game has been tested on people with little or no knowledge of Gaelic and they still escaped, not because it was too easy, it can take 20 to 40 minutes to complete, but because learning had taken place. You don't need to have any Gaelic to get in, but you'll need to learn a little bit to get out. Another exciting discovery is the pedagogical value of the act of designing an escape room. I have very basic Gaelic and Elaine has intermediate level Gaelic which was enough to enable us to design the activities with DJ on hand to check our translations and correct any mistakes. Through the process of designing an escape room I certainly found my vocabulary expanded, my grammar improved and I learned even more about Gaelic cultural contexts. And so I think there could be some exciting possibilities in assigning students the challenge of designing their own escape rooms, as the pedagogical value could be much greater than designing one for them as participants. As we've shown, Gaelic language and culture has been a rich source of inspiration and material for our escape room. The ancient proverbs and folklore with the tree alphabet and runes are a real treat from a design perspective, allowing for really immersive experiences with fantasy elements. But we should point out that Gaelic culture and Scottish traditions can be victims of cultural appropriation and stereotyping, and we took great care to ensure that the elements and themes chosen were done with respect and accuracy. Furthermore, we we would advise that if you are considering using different languages and cultures in your activities that you engage with suitably qualified translators and consultants. Don't rely on Google Translate or online research alone to inform your content. It can be really easy to make quite embarrassing mistakes. Another important quality consideration of course is accessibility and inclusivity. We design online learning content with accessible formats as default, but we encountered some unique challenges in designing accessible escape room activities. By their nature, escape rooms tend to incorporate activity formats for which there is no precedent. Our wooden board game with pebbles, for example, is unique. There are coloured stripes painted onto the pebbles which would benefit from being described in some non-visual way. We have not yet determined the best way as well to describe the OEM runes of the alphabet, but we're working on it. Also, as we've mentioned, cultural references like children's games may not be universally recognised or understood. However, despite these challenges, the general principles of accessibility will remain the same. You just have to adapt how you would normally meet these requirements. The escape room idea is one that received much praise and positive feedback. It makes learning a language so much fun. The potential to explore escape room challenges is huge and has led to much excitement and anticipation to what comes next. So we've already identified a variety of improvements and innovative workarounds for the next activities we create. We've added an accessibility statement to the online game, explaining our ongoing efforts in this area and welcoming suggestions from users. We're planning to add a link to a survey at the end of the online game to gather more feedback and data. And we're now planning the next phase of work, which we hope will deliver more activities, building on what we've learned. 
and we have some exciting ideas for new formats and novel uses of learning technologies. Our first online escape room example is a simple old school point and click game which is really popular with retro gaming trends at the moment. So we're exploring more ideas in that vein and other trends that could attract new learners. Thank you for taking an interest in our project. Please get in touch if you need more information or if you'd like to learn more. Martian leave. More in tang agus Martian leave. Many thanks and goodbye.